Welcome to the Business of Cleaning. We are the business podcast for the cleaning industry. And what we do is bring industry expertise straight to your ears every single week. For our April mini season, we've brought on guest Mike Derryberry to talk about an introduction to leadership. Leadership is huge and it is important that you learn how to leverage it as a success tool for your business. Get ready, sit back, and just listen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the business of cleaning. I told you we had a great mini season coming up, and I meant it. I have with me Mike Derryberry from Compass. It's Compass Cleaning Solutions? Correct. Yeah. Okay. For some reason, I just doubted myself right there. <laughs> All right. Um, but I get rolling, and that's what happens. But yes, we have Mike Derryberry for Compass Cleaning Solutions with us, and we are going to do a whole mini season the entire month of April on leadership and an introduction to really what leadership is. It's the bones of leadership. It's what you need to know before you even approach a leadership role. And I couldn't have picked a better person to do this with. So Mike, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, I am the chief visionary officer, and I'll probably explain that in a minute, and owner of Compass Cleaning Solutions. We've been in business now for 17 years. Uh, We are located in the Phoenix, Arizona region or area. Um, We are a franchise based uh, company where we have about 96 franchise owners currently. And we, I suppose, somewhere in the neighborhood of 600, 650 accounts, ranging every from really small accounts to really large accounts, and virtually every industry out there, from medical to golf courses, you know, I mean, we do everything. So um, that's kind of the breadth of what we do. And, uh, you know, I'm just here to kind of talk about leadership, which is kind of my passion. So It was great when I talked to Mike a little bit ago and we first got introduced because leading into season three, we know that leadership is mostly always a hot topic, but especially right now when things have changed so much and, when we were talking about what Mike's passionate about and leadership came up, I was like, Ooh, this is perfect. And so we're going to break down really four heavy hitting points over this month. Every Tuesday, an episode's going to come out for you and we'll write that blog post so that you can go through, read the transcript, read the highlights, and also get to know Mike and his team and what they do. So this first episode, we're going to really dive into establishing a purpose because you can't just kind of step into a business blind or even a leadership position and there's so much more behind it and establishing your why right off the bat is so important so i'm going to let mike go ahead and dive in first yeah uh purpose is such a big deal um you know it's not an it's not a new concept uh jim collins talked about it in good to great There have been other authors and people and strategists who've talked about it over the years. But I think the the person who kind of really kind of brought it to the forefront recently is Simon Sinek. And, you know, there's the classic book, you know, Start With Why and some of these other kinds of concepts that that he uh, promotes. And um, honestly, the idea behind why or the idea behind purpose really gets down to you know, how, is, how does a company really formulate itself? How, how does it go forward? Too often, I, I talk to people about um, what, you know, why do you want to do what you do? And typically, here's what I find. They tell me what they do rather than why they do it. And when I start drilling down with them and asking them questions, they begin to realize that they really don't know why they do what they do. And one of the things I'd like to you know, help people understand is if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, it's going to be a really hard kind of a, a road if that you're going to walk specifically in hiring the right people, getting the right customers, uh, in our case, getting the right franchise owners, because people emotionally, we've 
you know, we've seen this and from studies that have been done over the last, you know, 20 years or so, that emotional, you know, that emotional equivalent, that EQ is so, so important. Um, and like, I, I look at our, our team right now, we have this awesome team right now. And the biggest thing that I think has, it has uh, helped us formulate this team is because we talk first and foremost about our purpose and our values. In other words, why we do what we do and how we do it, right? But knowing that is the, is, is the foundational issues. I mean, you need to know these things. And if people are not aligned with those issues right from the very beginning, you're going to have you're going to have employee issues later down the road. They're going to be struggling to get in alignment with your company. Um, and you're going to have people doing things and you're going to ask yourself, why the heck did you do that? Because they had a different set of values. They had a different purpose because you weren't clear about it up front. Now, I see this in terms of turnover all the time. Um, when we finally got a hold of this and we really started applying this to our franchise owners, I mean, in the early days, you know, when we first started out, it was like you had a warm body and you were willing to work. Okay, you know, come on. But as we went along, we began to realize, no, we can't do that. We've got to, we've got to really focus more on helping those people understand why we do what we do. And our team needs to understand that so that the two of them are in alignment. And when those two are in alignment, then our customers come in and they see, okay, well, there's alignment with us as well. And so now we have this synergy that we're, where we can work together and it's a long-term process and it's a long-term um, relationship. Whereas it, 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 it's otherwise it's kind of rotational. And what I often see in, in our industry in particular is people are chasing the dollar. They're chasing growing their company or they're, they're chasing growing more accounts or, or whatever. And somehow that becomes the measure by which, which you do your, your business and how you measure your business. And we took the, the approach from the very beginning, which you know, I used to say, we're taking the long haul rather than the short run. And, you know, I think what that means is we're not, we don't churn through franchise owners. We don't churn through a customers. We don't churn through vendors. We take the time, we find people that we want to do business with, whether it's a vendor, a customer, or a franchise owner, or even a team member. And then we work to establish a long-term relationship. It's a slower process. You don't build as fast. You don't seemingly grow in the short term, but in the long run, you're going to have a much more stable and I think uh, a much more um, viable operation than if you're just constantly churning through the different components. So that's kind of my nutshell where I, where I want to go. You have some questions you want to ask about that? I was just thinking it's comparable to if you build a house and you just want to get it done to move in and start living in it right away versus if you take the time to build the house with the right foundation, the right structure, right. And you give it strength. It makes a huge world of difference to what happens when the storm blows in or just normal wear and tear set in. Does right. your house last? Right. Um, it's the same with a business. You got to set the right foundation. So just thinking about that, why the, the correlation, I think for a lot of people too, is this connection to employees. That's a huge thing that I've seen people struggle with, especially right now. I don't know how it is for you guys, but in the Toledo area, it's always been a little hard to recruit. We're competing with some bigger companies that have come in. There's a lot of um, graduates tend to get snapped up from college before they even graduate and shipped out to that bigger cities. And so, you know, that's something we've struggled with for a while is as far as finding team members that align and things like that, it can be tough. So retaining them is so much more important and it should be anywhere you go, but you know, depending on where you're at, it's, it's not always at the forefront, but connecting with your employees is very difficult if you don't know why you're even in business. And 
sometimes I'm shocked, you know, when you're talking to somebody and they don't know why they're doing what they're doing. They're just trying to bring yeah. in the money. Like you said, it makes, you know, it's, it's, it, you make a good point. I, um, when we talk about our, our employees, one of the things we, we review our purpose and we review our values on a regular basis. And the reason we do that is I want people to understand that what we're what we're about is bigger than ourselves. And I think that's the thing that most, I mean, again, we, if I refer back to Simon Sinek, you know, he's done some, some research and, and a lot of people have, have it in, in, in conjunction with some of the stuff that he's done. And that what we discovered is that in many cases, when people, especially this younger generation, this younger generation wants to know that they're making a difference. They want to know that they are impacting their world. It doesn't matter what they're doing so much as that I can impact my world. And if you're just basically saying, yeah, we're here to make money or, you know, we already have it the most bit, most uh, customers. Well, that doesn't really motivate a whole lot of people. And if you will go in and you say, okay, well, why are we doing this? For example, you know, our, our purpose, we, we have two because we have, because we're a franchise company, we, you know, we have two different kind of sides of our company, but on the, on the, the, the customer side from, from our perspective, you know, or, and our customer, by the way, is our franchise owner. I mean, they are our customer for, in a very real sense. And our, our purpose for them is we want to raise the standard of clean by empowering entrepreneurship. We want to empower entrepreneurs. A lot of the people who come to us are tired of working for somebody else. They want to have control of their destiny. They want to have control of their income. They want to have control of their future. Well, that's what we're all about. We're all about empowering our franchise owners. We're about empowering them. And as a result of empowering them, we end up raising the standard of clean. Now that means that a lot of different things were, you know, we, we want to use different kinds of products and we want to use the best possible equipment and tools and things like that. But the bottom line is, we want to do that because of entrepreneurship, because we've focused on that. On the other hand, we want our franchise owners to understand that what you do as a franchise owner, when you go in and you clean a facility, you are increasing that business's productivity, their profitability, and their performance. And you do that when you come in and you create a clean, healthy, safe, and organized environment. When you do that, that you're having an impact on that company. You have a direct impact. Well, now a franchise owner looks at that and goes, oh, I, I'm important to the outcome of this business. I have value. I and mean, that's a big deal for, for us. I mean, we want to make sure that our franchise understand you have value. You have, you have meaning here. What you're doing is important. And unfortunately, outside of our industry, I mean, I think people inside of our industry understand that what we do is important. None of us wants to work in a dirty, junky environment, right? But for whatever reason, and I could probably go into, you know, a tirade on that, but the, the general public doesn't view janitorial service providers in the same way that they do maybe a IT guy or a doctor or somebody else, right? They, they don't see the same value. And what we're trying to say to our franchise owners is you have value. So when we get back to our employees, our team members, we want them to understand that these people that, that have paid money to, to have a franchise, they have value and you need to value them. By the way, you need to value one another and we work together. And I guess that's you know where I, I see the point of having a purpose and understanding what that purpose is, is so critical. I talk to people and I say, what, what's your purpose? And I say, well, you know, my family and, and building a family. I said, okay, so let me ask you a question. If 
I'm guessing that you're a smart person and you probably could do probably a hundred things and you could probably do them pretty well. There's a hundred things you could choose from and you could do a hundred different things. My guess is that there are probably 10 that you could be world class at, maybe a few less, but somewhere in that range, you could be world class if you really focused on those things. But you chose this one thing you did. Why? Why did you choose this one thing? But more importantly, if you chose something else, would your purpose be different? And when they say, well, no, I mean, my, my family would still be the same. I said, so the family really isn't specific to a, a particular area in, that you would focus on, a, a business area of some sort, a career. Your purpose is, why do you do that? That one thing. Why are you doing that? And when you can get your head around why I am doing this one thing, it's everything. It's so important because I think even from my perspective, something similar, people have said, why don't you create your own shop or your own store? Because I'm creative. I like to make things. Even if it's not like directly like something artistic or whatever, I like to make things. Somebody gives me a hands-on project. I'm all over that. Somebody said, make a podcast, make two podcasts. And I was like, yes, I got this. I like to make things. So a lot of people will ask me, well, why don't you go make your own shop? Why don't you go off and run your own business or do things like that? I was like, I don't have a purpose. I do, like there's a couple of things I could be passionate about, but right now I don't have that reason why I would just go and do it. And if you just jump in and do something for the sake of doing it or just to make money, it dies out so quickly. Like the passion yep. is not there from the beginning. And that's why I'm like, yes, I would love to do something impactful, but I have to establish my why and I have to go into it with a plan. And know that that is something I'm going to carry with me throughout however long something like that would last. Like, I do want to make an impact. That impact, that value is so important for why people do things and why things last. You know, you make a, you make a good point. And, and I don't know whether everybody caught what you're saying, but you're talking about your own personal reason, your own personal why, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, a, I think, an issue that, that, it, it really struck home with me. I mean, when I first started this journey of really doing my best to formulate these ideas, right? I kind of went, and went about it backwards. I started with my business and I started saying, okay, what's our purpose? Da, 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 da. And we were doing pretty well. I mean, we got a pretty good idea. We made, we, you know, we cl clarified some of our values and all of this and it was, it was okay. It was good. But honestly, there was this, kind of unsettledness in me and I'm thinking this just isn't isn't right something's not in sync here and then it dawned on me one day I was doing some strategic planning I was getting ready for for um, an annual pl planning for our company and it dawned on me oh my gosh I'm doing this for the business I have never done this for myself I have never gone through this exercise for me all of a sudden I'm going, oh my gosh, if I can't even explain why I do this, how do I expect anybody else to do it? How, how can I expect anybody else to buy in if I don't even know why I'm buying in? And so I spent about two or three months just really focusing my attention on who am I, what, what's my purpose, and ultimately, you know, People think that your purpose has to be this. Oh my gosh, I've never heard that before statement, right? <laughs> it's like, that is so unique. And so people get all hung up on making this, this statement that is, that is, oh, that is so special. And that is, and we're going to write that down. And for the annals of history, people are going to remember that, right? And they get stuck and they get hung up on that. I can tell you right now, it's not important. What is important is if it resonates with you. And what I came to for me personally was my purpose is to inspire and influence positive change in others. So no matter what I'm doing in life, whether it's business or personal, whatever, if I'm inspiring and influencing positive change, then that's 
in alignment with my personal purpose, right? Here's what I find interesting. I would venture to say if you ask, let's say, take 100 business owners in every different category, what's your personal purpose? What's your personal why? Most of them would go, uh, and they might struggle and they might come up with something. But I'm betting that most of them would not have a real clear understanding of why they do what they do. What they really need to understand is, why do I do this? Because if I understand why I do this, then understand if you're the leader of your organization, your blueprint is all over the company. It's in the company values. It's in everything that we do. Now, if our values as a company are slightly worded differently and they're, you know, have a slightly different focus perhaps, but you can go through every one of our values and my values are there. They're consistent with my values. And what we attempt to do as a company is to influence and inspire our franchise owners to be better, to have a better life, to, to create something of a value for themselves. And as a result, when I did that, I noticed that the rest of my team went, oh yeah, I get it now. Because <laughs> I was exuding what I understood to be my own purpose. And if as, as a leader, you're not doing that, you can't expect other people to get on board if you don't even know why you're doing what you're doing. I, I think it's so critical. And so what you said, you know, getting my, knowing my purpose, that is so critical. It's so important. Well, a lot of times, like, even if you just look at things on a really base level, like motivation to get, go in and just do your day-to-day -day job. If you're not passionate coming to the team, then it influences the people around you, whether you're a leader or not. Right. I notice my rough days, people are like, are you okay? Um, Cause I, I thankfully don't have a lot of them, but I've had a couple of days where I've come in, I've not had my normal energy and something's got me down or like physically, like I, you know, I'm just not the same energy level and people are like, Oh, why? And you notice like one of my things, just something I want to accomplish is I want to make myself happy. Of course, because can't make other people happy if you're not happy and I want to make others happy and that's my thing is I love when people when I can install some kind of joy in somebody I love that kind right. of impact as simple as it is and so like when I realize like I'm kind of sucking the joy out of the room by not even just being myself my normal self like mm -hmm. that sucks but if I am in a job that I'm not passionate about I'm not happy doing I notice I'm able to bring that joy to the table a lot less and it's contagious whatever you bring is contagious and it you know what you just said is, is is so true i mean you were talking we were talking earlier about finding employees it's just really hard right well here's the thing if the business owner the leader of that company or the leaders in general of the company are not clear then when you go to recruit people, there's going to be dissonance and they're going to go, yeah, I'm not really sure I'm feeling comfortable about this. The beauty of, ha of knowing yourself and knowing the, the values and knowing the purpose of your own company is people will either d disqualify themselves, they'll self disqualify <laughs> mm -hmm. or they want to be recruited, man. They want to be part of that. They, whatever it is that you, you've stated, when they're clear about it and when you're clear about it, they will want to be part of that. They, they'll just be, be, be we, we call it creating a magnetic culture. That's what we talk about around here. It's creating a magnetic culture. Are we drawing and, 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 and pulling the right people to us? Um, we, we have people come through now all the time as far as you know like maybe they want to be a franchise owner and they come in and we start talking about things and you can just see on their expression and their countenance they're just going i'm just not really kind of comfortable with all this you know okay that's okay because guess what next next time in somebody walks in and just they just light up 
all of a sudden they go, oh, I want to be part of this. Great. Because when you have alignment, everybody does better. Right? But on so, on, so many times, we just want a body. You know, and I'm going, why would you bring, you know, I, I, I watch the Olympics a lot. I love the Summer Olympics because they have a lot of really cool sports. But one of the sports I love to watch because I grew up in Seattle and we did a lot of, there were a lot of crew and the crew in Seattle was the University of Washington had a great crew team at the, when I was growing up. And so I would watch these guys out on Lake Washington. They would be practicing. And it was amazing to walk the, watch the eight man shell. And these guys would just be, I mean, it was just this perfect unison. But every so often somebody would get caught on a wave or their paddle wouldn't go in quite exactly right. And you could just see all of a sudden the whole shell would just kind of, you know, kind of quiver a little bit and you would lose its momentum and the speed would be lost. And I use that as an illustration because if you've got everybody rowing in sync and everybody is in alignment and you're moving, man, these guys, they rip through the, through the water. But when somebody's out of sync, it's just, it's a mess. And I see that in business. If we don't have our teams in sync, it's going to be a mess. And if you look around, you talked, I, I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day and he, he says, I want out of here so bad. He's working for another company. He goes, I want out of here so bad. I said, well, why? And he said, he says, it's just, it's, it's, it's toxic. He said, you know, people, the, 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 the managers and the owners are all just down on us all the time. And they just like their thumb is on us all the time. And we have no freedom. We can't do anything. And I'm thinking, you're talking 2021. You think these guys had been reading some books or doing something over the last 20 years and understand that might have worked in 1940, 1950, maybe even 1960. It doesn't work anymore. Right. I mean, it's not that's not the way this works. And unfortunately, we still see people doing that. Well, if you want to be a successful company, take a clue. It's, that's not the way to do it. You know, you need to find a way to engage people with what really motivates them and it's their values and their purpose in life. If you can get that in alignment with what you're doing, it may not be the exact thing, but if they if they can adopt your purpose and, and adopt your big cause, if you will, man, they're going to they're going to be off to the races with you. Mm -hmm. Well. I think of sometimes like, I think there's this misunderstanding when it comes to recruitment and things like that, that you don't have to like your team to work with them, but it, it's so much like that the people side, they try to take the people side out of it and they try to pretend that you only have to resonate with the business's purpose and things like that. And it's like, you were just saying the personal purpose of even every single person and the leaders and every, it all matters. So if somebody doesn't resonate with the team, they're not going to resonate with the business. And right. that, that personal fit is still so important. Exactly and yes, right. it's harder to quantify. It's harder to measure. It's harder to bring to an interview and actually get a judge of, but you really have to try. Or it's like you said, it might not even just be one person. It might be your whole team is out of sync. <laughs> They're probably not only not going places, but yep. that boat is eventually going to sink. So, and you know, you made a good point there. That's one of the reasons why it is so difficult to convince like old school leaders to, to adopt the, the idea of emotional, you know, quotient, you know, the EQ and, and, you know, the emotional capital that we have as leaders to be able to influence other people um, is so critical. When you have people th in your organization that um, really can't resonate and, and aren't, look, it's not their fault. You were the one who brought them in as the leader, right? You're, you brought them into an environment that you didn't tell them the whole truth. You didn't explain the whole thing to them. And as a, as a, as a leader, what happens is if you're an old school leader, the, they want to be, they want to have the ability to measure stuff, right? Well, how do you measure feelings? How do you measure <laughs> drive? How do you, how do you measure, you know, motivation? How do you, me 
these are not measurable quotients. These are not something that you can put a you know one to ten scale on. It, it doesn't work that way. It's it's almost like everything that we do is all internal, but the internal all has to kind of match together, right? And it, the job of a leader is to provide an environment where those individuals are going to achieve their own personal goals while at the same time fulfilling the, the corporate goals. I mean, that's what we talked about. I want our franchise owners, for example, to, to succeed. If they succeed, so do we, right? I mean, but the goal isn't for us to succeed and then maybe they'll succeed. No, <laughs> the focus is on them to succeed, right? The focus is on my, my team. You know, I've, I've said to my team, I've said to people about my team, for, I don't know, for a long time now. One of the things that I, that I say to people is, look, I'm not naive. People are not going to be here for their entire life, okay? They're not going to be here for 40 years. They're not going to be here for 30, maybe not even here for 20 years. I'm not naive. I understand that's going to happen. But here's what I do want. When that person comes, they're one person. When they leave, whenever that happens to be, I want them to be better than when they came. I want them to be a better person. I want them to be a better employee. I want them to be more capable, more trained, more whatever. They're better than when they started. And if they are better than when they started, more power to them. I will help them achieve whatever they want to achieve. Here's the thing. Nobody right now, our team, they're 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 pushing forward. We've got a great unified team right now. But I'm not naive. Some of those people are going to be excel, and somebody's going to come along and go, "Gosh, they're really good. They're really great. <laughs> I want that person on my team." And maybe they'll see an opportunity, and they'll leave. That's okay, because they're doing better. We did well while they were here. We'll find someone else and we'll raise somebody else up. But that's but if you don't have that mentality, you know, you're going to constantly be fighting the turnover and the churn. I mean, it's just it's inevitable if you don't take the time. And yes, it does take time and it does take effort and it's not easy, but you've got to do it. You've got to spend the time and put the effort in to really identify and solidify your values and your, and especially your purpose. Exactly. And I don't think there's really too much better of a way to wrap up this first episode of our mini season. Um, so thank you, Mike, for you that. Bet. Um, everybody, we're not done with Mike yet. We've got three more episodes with him where we're just going to keep diving in and giving you the nitty gritty on leadership and really where you need to start to make sure that you're, you're going beyond and you're actually doing what you want to as a leader. Um, and that you are somebody that people can look up to and follow because that's ultimately what mm -hmm. you're doing. All right. So we're going to stop here and we will see you next episode.